Hey everybody, I apologize if you've already seen this. I uh, had an audio issue with Premiere and I'm bringing this back and re-recording all the audio, so hopefully it won't be too boring. I make no guarantees. What we're looking at right now, if you haven't seen this before, is a comparison of the size and the sun drop quality between what I did in the first Nemesis video and Lords of Hellas, which is the first Waken Realms game to come out with the sun drop option. We did a little bit of the blue and the black. If this is your first time watching the video, that's what we did in the first one. And we matched it to Adrestia, which was a free figure in Lords of Hellas. Flipping everybody around so you can hopefully see him in a little more focus. And you can see each one of these guys is a little bit different. I am a big fan of trying to keep scientific accuracy as much as possible. And I like to think about the uh, consequences of the genetic makeup and the culture, really, of what I'm painting. Especially when you're doing something brand new, like these Carnomorphs. There's no history to them. You just know that they're going to be the intruders on the Nemesis ship. So uh, a lot of my decisions are going to be based on that. And a couple flips around. The Hive Mother's a little bigger, but I can't fit all of them on there. But you can see Lords of Hellas is about half the size of the regular Nemesis guys that you use as a player. And much, much smaller than the Intruders, which are bigger than everything else. So, a lot of uh, options are available. One of the things I do on a lot of the games you can see here is I do UV paint. And I haven't really decided if I want to do this with Nemesis. But you can see how cool it looks on this Zombicide Zombie. Um, you can change the lighting around, set up different uh, LED light strips, and uh, bring your game experience to a whole new level. Here I'm going to start with uh, Lead Belcher from Citadel. You don't need to use Citadel paints. I just happen to have a box of them and I want to go through it. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Uh, and we're going to be typically dry brushing all around. The first thing I want to do though is get the mouth and I like the metallic because uh, it makes it look kind of wet depending on uh, what you have in the, the application of it for. And yeah I know I got a bristle stuck up his nose but don't worry about that because of the way that the dry brushing is going to go around it and uh, the colors in general just mellow after about a day so it, you won't hardly notice it we're going to use one of these square tip brushes it's a very stiff brush and I got some junk mail off to the side that uh, I'm going to dry it off with so I just get enough on the tip to put things on the high parts so just the paint on the high parts if you go backwards against the grain basically it's going to deposit a little bit of the paint on the underside of the edges and that's going to really make it pop and shine. The metallics against the black really make it look like you go gunmetal. If you wanted to use uh, Army Painter gunmetal is very similar to Lead Belcher. And against the black the metallics make those raised surfaces shine and even though it's a flat black, it makes it look like the, I'm going to assume, chitinous, C-H-I-T-O-N-I-S. Uh, chitin is the uh, stuff mushrooms and insect shells are made of. And uh, so that's different than like the uh, uh, stuff your fingernails are made of, which is like uh, what other mammals have for hair, rhino horns, that type of thing all claws, fingernails, they use this other thing called chitin that uh, they're built out of. And it's shiny. It buffs up. If you look at a beetle under a microscope or under certain lights, they have um, what's called an interference effect. And it blooms out, has all these weird colors attached to it. So for me, a metallic really seems similar to that kind of appearance. The little spiky parts on the legs and 
what honestly looks more like uh, rock than it does the uh, the carapace shell that the uh, little appendages seem to be made out of and the breastplate and the back plates. This guy right here is a breeder and I like having more than one color to my stuff. Some people uh, just want everything to be uniform and that's totally fine. You do what you want. It drives me insane to have to paint more than one model exactly the same way. I just mentally, it's too boring and I can't handle it. So I justify having the breeders be in black and the higher color of blue, which is similar to the uh, the hive mother. And what that makes me think is as the genetic material between the blue ones and the black ones mixes together, you get the darker blue. So uh, that gives them a little bit of a culture. Uh, it, I mean, if they're going to be called breeders, that means they're going to have sexual reproduction. So there should be some crossing of that genetic material and uh, it just makes the board look more interesting. We'll do a family photo at the end. You'll see that they all still look alike as long as we didn't get too far away in the colors. And just keep hitting those surfaces. I mean you can be talking about weird stuff the whole time like I am and keep painting along, painting along, painting along and uh, just don't be precious with it. Just get in there don't uh, worry too much if you hit something from the base coat because you can always just cover it back up. That's one of the things about uh, moving dark to light. It's easy to cover up the light stuff with uh, dark paint. It's a lot harder to cover up dark paint with a highlight. You're not going to cover it up completely. You're going to just highlight it. There's still going to be some underneath it. you got to go coat after coat after coat trying to get rid of it. And give them a little pedicure and the I'm not worried about the color separation between the base and the figure by using the uh, same lead belcher on the grates I'm using lead belcher on all of the grates I want it to be consistent because it's the same ship now you may be tempted to make these rusted or full of debris and other stuff I'm going to avoid that not just because I'm too lazy to make the bases extra special but there's a big reason for that now you're playing in this game as a bunch of scientists pilots military other stuff whatever the reason you're stuck in space and you're in a like a hibernation pod there's no reason there would be oxygen anywhere else on the ship other than in your pod and possibly just the room the pod is in everything else would be sealed because oxygen would carry water and possibly screw up everything else in the ship wow big truck just went by never mind that so oh, and don't forget the hands i mean they're raised right up there they're going to catch a lot of light um, but back to the ship. So there's not going to be any uh, water vapor running around to rust anything. You're not going to use materials that will rust. You're going to be out there in space hibernating for decades. Who knows? And you can't afford things to oxidize. So plastics, uh, stainless steel. And stainless steel, I mean, it is... People will make a lot of hay about titanium, but nothing for the cost, nothing for the strength, nothing for the working ability will ever, ever replace stainless steel. It will be the thing that we use to put us on all the planets and take from other planets because iron is a simple element it's in the cores of many planets. It's out there in those asteroids. We're going to be able to make steel anywhere we go. A little bit of uh, CO2, give us some carbon, 
some catalysts, some heat. Hey, we're going to be making forges out there in space. So uh, as we look at the basing options, the debris options, and other stuff from the ship, uh, that's why I made those decisions. Also, uh, and these guys right here are the creepiest little guys. I'm going to talk about blood a whole lot when we get to them. Just fix our camera, get a nice angle. There we go. Um, and crumbs are a big issue in space. I don't know if you saw The Simpsons where Homer opened the potato chip bag and he had to go flowing through and it was great. But uh, that's a huge problem for NASA and why they serve everything on tortillas is uh, because they can't have crumbs floating around the last forever. If you were to... Uh, if you were to drop some water in a microgravity environment, and our next uh, color up, because it's a lighter blue, we're gonna go shining silver. If you had army painter, it's gonna be a different color on Citadel. Uh, I think it's rune fang steel. Yeah, there are higher steels or higher color steels that you can get uh, from Citadel and from uh, army painter. But uh, this is the one that just happened to be in the big army painter box. And when I was looking for Citadel matches, this is the one I grabbed. Uh, again, doing the mouth first, just to make it ooey gooey, because it's a point of interest and uh, the thing that you should be fearing, right? If this is a carnivore, it's coming after you. You're afraid of the teeth. So anyway, um, back to the idea of microgravity. Uh, these guys crawling around uh, I want to think about like how their body um, is developing. Right now, these crawlies, crawlers, whatever you want to call them, uh, are very likely to be at the halfway point between the larval stage and the super cool intruders with the uh, two tails going. And you can see the tails starting in the back, but I guess like a tadpole, it's just down to nubs right now and they'll just crawl along. For me, the idea of something crawling on the ground, like a spider or um, really probably any aggressive carnivore, it's gonna attack you in that crawling position. There's just something in the base monkey part of our brain, uh, or even earlier than that, the egg-laying mammals way back before there were monkeys, still are going to be attacked from the ground. So you want to make these guys as terrifying as possible. Uh, maybe even the idea that they're damaged, zombie-like, because they're half-formed. Lots of different things to think about. Breaking out the lead belcher one more time. And I screw up here, but it's okay. Here's the screw up. It's too wet. So and right there in the front, you can see there's a little blue p poking through, and you shouldn't have that if uh, it's dry enough. But when I was switching between the different uh, color metallics, I dipped it in the water, and I thought I dried it off, and I did not. I did not dry it off well enough. But don't worry about it. Just keep going, because you can always do a second coat. doesn't matter. Uh, and a lot of times especially because of the way that I did the uh, airbrushing, you get the overspray onto the, uh, the bases. What I will typically do, depending on the complexity of the model, is just put masking tape and keep the bases pristine and then paint them later. It's up to you, you can do whatever you want. Just honestly, just hit it with a second coat if you want it for speed. The sun drop method and the people that are gonna be watching this video probably are not super crazy crystal brush uh, painters. You're probably like me. Maybe you've been doing it for a year and a half or so like I have, and you do it because they look better on the table and you wanna encourage your friends to play with you or you just like the satisfaction of not playing with the base plastic. It just feels better to do that. So don't don't think you have to do everything perfect. 
it's going to be totally fine if it bugs you that you can see a little bit of blue when you shift it a certain way you can go back in and just touch it up yeah don't you see i got a little bit of gunk all over the uh the forearm there of his appendage i'm not worried about that i'm just going to come back in a little later the uh, paint will have toned down a little bit and uh, i'll hit it with another coat of the blue or some highlight do something throw some blood on there just don't worry about little mistakes uh, at this point we're just basically one step above basing things and uh, there's no reason to uh, talk yourself out of continuing just because of a little problem here we go with the darker blue and against the darker blue I'm going to use the darker of my two metallics and continue to go in I want there to be a separation between the chitinous areas where the carapace would be and the muscular areas. It seems to be pretty evident that there is uh, very much like a mantis shrimp um, in the way that they're, they're designed. There is a, a musculature that causes those uh, appendages to be able to flop out and probably very quickly be used as weapons to tie down their prey, puncture them, disable them, or tear them apart. When they get a little bigger, when they get to the intruder stage, they're going to have two tails, two legs, two arms, and two of those appendages. So um, I'm guessing that the way they feed is through the mouth, or they carry things over to the queen so she can feed very much like a uh, social insect like uh, a bee or an ant and uh, they're yeah we're just hitting the base and stuff like that and that's how they're they're going to develop so I want to create a separation in the materials and the location of certain parts of their body by not painting every surface. Now the back they're gonna get hit from especially in this larval stage because they're crawling and in the front uh, but arms they've got so many arms tails legs probably not armored and all that concerned uh, with them and they can have a softer musculature that allows them to go quicker. Here you can see on one of the more adult intruders that they're basically uh, a human and Doc Ock kind of thrown together with these uh, tails made almost of vertebrae. If you look how a snake skeleton works, it's just a ton of vertebrae. And when I go in, that's what I'm going to want to paint it as. Uh, I had uh, four ruptured discs in my back, so I can't eat oxtail soup anymore, but uh, because it reminds me too much of what happened. Um, but the, uh, the, the knowledge I gained from trying to figure out what was going on with my back uh, made me appreciate the design of our vertebrae quite a bit. And you can see it's starting to, to pop really well even though it's just that that darker metallic it just catches the light in an interesting way and i like it uh they're on the thigh uh on these intruders and a couple of models i don't want to go too far in depth with that thigh armor i just wanted the protrusions i think that's kind of a transition point probably between the hard and the soft and uh, i mean they don't wear clothes eh. Uh, keep knocking stuff off. If your poster putty is uh, on the old side, then uh, it's not going to stick very well. Uh, I should have probably replaced it, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I'm going to go in there with the fingers. The fingers are probably going to take a lot of tension trying to rip things apart, and they want to be sharp, like claws, in order to tear things apart. I'm guessing that once the tails 
and the appendages hold whatever the prey is that the uh, the fingers get into the soft underbellies and really do the work uh, another thing about these guys I mean I, I hit the, the chitin on the face and there's no eyes there are some little spots where maybe they have some type of sensory organ but I don't think that's how they hunt now you're gonna play nemesis sound is how they find you my guess is that their feet are what are used to catch prey that they can feel the uh, the ground and in a microgravity non-atmosphere environment they probably stick to surfaces like a gecko because that would make a lot of sense if they don't have magnets then uh, those uh, microfilaments on the uh, toes of a gecko are incredibly powerful I don't remember the name of the force but uh, there's a force that is ridiculous like it's way better than duct tape uh, holding certain things on and it peels away really well uh, I know NASA is actually looking at making different surfaces to be used in space just based on the design of those gecko feet what is that hum oh plane uh, sometimes you're gonna hear some planes and sometimes you're just gonna hear Bill Burr over my house in his helicopter because that's where he flies around especially when I'm doing voiceovers but I'm gonna keep plowing through second time I've done this I'm just gonna keep plowing through do the best I can We've got another intruder here now I went on the base and I use this bastion gray from p3 p3 is great for finding tones in between what uh, army painter and citadel offer so keep them in line or keep them in mind because their lines of paints are still really good they stick really well and uh, I like them a lot but uh, I mean you, you can't argue with uh, the big displays of Citadel and the big boxes of army painter stuff that your friendly local might have but anyway I went in with the Bastion and then I go in with this Ulrich Gray at a higher level this is the point in every painters project where things look like crap all the time everything that you do you're gonna reach a point when you're gonna tell yourself it's a horrible ugly mess I never want to look at this thing again what did I do you have all this doubt no push through um, when the paint mellows down you just got to trust the technique it's gonna look way better all I'm doing right here is catching the raised surfaces and the edges just so you can tell them apart from the rest of the background giving it that dry brush highlight and this is some type of foam maybe it's uh, some uh, some small type of metal or plastic paneling that this intruder tore through now I don't know if the intruders injured and leaning on that uh, busted steel uh, column but hey you know it's just walking around and maybe it just is feeling its way to get through things so it doesn't have eyes or sense of smell if you're in a microgravity micro um, atmosphere environment smells useless to you um, a microgravity uh, it does affect how things land they wouldn't necessarily flow through the air the same way they just become these little bubbles that never leave and you don't really know uh, all the time where the the directionality of it's coming from I'm using the small dry brush from army painter uh, for this stuff it's just easier to get in there uh, you'll see the bristles are all torn to hell because uh, I use it a lot um, and early on when I was painting I didn't exactly treat it like it was my best friend and I should have but they're fairly cheap you can see on the Amazon affiliate links in the description um, how to get one of your own they come in the big uh, army painter sets or you can get this in a three pack with uh, 
the regiment and other brushes. So anyway, uh, we're gonna just keep going in, getting those highlights. It's already starting to look a little more uniform, a little better, and you can tell the layers of separation between the different pieces a lot better. As it dries, it's just gonna look even better. Um, let's see. So, talked about the dry brush, talked about microgravity, talked about uh, the the different species and uh, or different uh, little genetic differences in the species. What is that? Oh, motorcycle. Ah, it's uh, it's a crazy day. It's raining here uh, in my area, and it'll be raining all week. I don't know why all these people are out there flying helicopters and going crazy on uh, on motorcycles. So anyway, paint his butt. Don't forget that part. Um, yeah, get in there, any of the flat surfaces, anything that it would need for armor. Like I said, the back. So once we moved up from the crawler, now we're in a more advanced stage. Uh, I guess it, the crawler would be juvenile and this would be adult. Um, how it curls up to defend itself, it's, uh, it's back and butt um, would uh, be taking the brunt as the rest of these appendages fold up and fall over. Um, but you really want to get in there. I did some uh, blue highlighting. I'll show you in a little bit as well on that particular model. Uh, and here I am. I'm going to go back in and continue to uh, do the, the light gray highlights in the uh, the debris. I thought about rust, but there's no atmosphere, no water vapor, no rust. So it was pointless. The only thing that would rust it is if you had some leaky batteries. Uh, I put in one of them a bunch of orange tape. I thought maybe there would be some safety, you know, OSHA related uh, reason why they would have to have crazy bright colors, different parts of the ship. And as the intruders tore away the paneling or dropped in from the ceiling or all the different things they did, then uh, as they knocked around these uh, um, pieces of steel that are sticking out of the ground that used to be uh, some part of the ship that possibly exploded or imploded uh, and that's how the intruders got in that maybe they would be painted but if you're not going to have oxidation because there's no atmosphere you don't need paint that's why ships are all painted on the inside submarines are painted on the inside that's why industrial equipment is all painted to keep it from rusting but we live in what is what 20 percent oxygen almost the same water vapor like you know it rains heavily saturated with uh, with water so uh, spaceships might be just different get in there keep painting the butt do touch up some things that uh you know, if you got the brush in your hand and the paint's in the brush, then just go in and uh, fix stuff as you see it. Uh, certain sections, you'll see the, the the skull has less of the highlight, even though I hit it with just as much. Um, I'm not going back in and doing as much as on the uh, blade-like appendages, just to make them look more blade-like. A little more scary. Um, you can hit the undersides. I'll probably go back in with the uh, the darker uh, metallic color and do the undersides. Here's this guy's back. Look how pretty that is. And the color toned down. It really seems to fit now, at least in my opinion. But uh, I need to go in with the Imric blue and bring some of the blue highlights out in the muscle areas. So same dry brush. I want to do it with the small one if I can and just hit it. Now this may look neon blue to you. It is not going to stay that way. Everything is going to tone down. 
if you want it to be like maintained at neon blue the brighter your top coat or sorry the brighter your undercoat the brighter your top coat will be um, undersides of the fingers because of sensitivity I'm doing those with the more muscular color um, and just getting it like in between um, the fingers so that they're still metallic but they do look like they're combined with that soft tissue musculature they're probably not a full exoskeleton animal um, not like a beetle or a spider so they probably have some muscles that allow things to flex different ways like I said like a mantis shrimp to be able to attack quicker spring faster and uh, bring down prey so I'm just doing these areas that I consider to be more likely to be muscular right here but uh, if you hit it with a white undercoat instead of this dark blue undercoat then you get that high bright uh, electric blue is the color it would be an army painter uh, or crystal blue but I think electric blue uh, that color at least for what we're looking at it's going to come down much more like the Vallejo game color blue that I used on these and it's from a blue wash I just put it in the airbrush if you watch the first video uh, you can shove just about anything in an airbrush just keep it clean after you're done and uh, don't let it dry in there and clog they make lots of products so that you can uh, dissolve paint and uh, keep your brush going um, And that's what I used to change it up from the uh, Soulstone Blue. Now, when I went to the game store, I was going to check and see if they still had Soulstone Blue. They may have changed it. They may have changed the formulation slightly. Let's see. They have. They still have Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a dark blue, and you can use that for um, a replacement instead of the Vallejo Game Wash Blue. There, Soulstone. I don't know what I did with it, but there might be a new shade that uh, Citadel has if you can't find Soulstone Blue. Uh, I'm sure it'll be similar. Here we go. Just cleaning up where I may have tapped it with the uh, the blue a little too much, or just didn't catch it the first time. And you can see now there's a big color separation. But here's a problem. It's very monotone. We need something to be like that power of three, third color. Right now we just have silver and we have blue. Something just needs to, to set it off. Something needs to separate out the color a little more and give us the opportunity to tell us a more story. And we'll be doing that in a minute. Don't worry too much if you uh, didn't make it perfect. The fun thing about biologicals is there's no clear separation between certain uh, parts of the bodies. There's always some little bit of carryover where a tendon or a ligament attaches or a certain part of skin you know, it starts to change texture. So don't worry too much about that if it's a biological. If it's uh, something else, then you got to worry. Doom Bull Brown is one of my favorite blood colors. And that's important because we're going to use red to break things up. If you have Army Painter, maybe you want to use Glistening Blood. Hey, I'm not going to tell you not to. If you like P3, Sanguine Base. You also have a Sanguine Highlight, but... Uh, I like using the dark brown and some old toothbrush to really give it the look as if it uh, has been sit, you know, sitting on the figure for a while. It's not a fresh kill. You know, they move around, right? They attack things, so it's not like it's just on there. 
do a quick test with the toothbrush on some junk mail. This was a bill from Target, if that is of any interest to you. And uh, I'm going to give it some speckling first. This type of paint isn't perfect for this kind of application, um, but I just want to kind of spread it around a little bit. Microgravity environment, things are going to be in little globules and they're going to float around. But for the most part, they're not going to go anywhere pressure is not pushing them. So when these spike things puncture, they're not really going to do too much other than what the heartbeat will cause, the arterial spray will cause for, for spreading. It's not going to go up and down or across. It's just going to be these things floating around forever. So I keep it uh, kind of to the chest where the mouth would be. Again, talking about grabbing with the uh, bladed tails and uh, extra appendages, pulling it close, and then chewing with the mouth. So that definitely, it's not going to drip onto the chest plate, but as it pushes itself or pushes the uh, prey into its mouth, it doesn't have a large mouth like a crocodile or snake um, to do full body swallowing. These guys are significantly larger than the humans that they're hunting, but um, it doesn't look like they're going to swallow them whole. It looks more like they're going to do some chewing and uh, they're going to get their heads in there. So I just give it a little bit of uh, the blood. It's not going to drip. It's not going to drip out of the thing, uh, out of the, the body. Once the heart stops pumping, it stays in there. Gravity is not going to pull it out. So uh, I don't see it getting too much everywhere, but definitely the bladed parts touching soft tissue. Uh, I'm pushing the directionality of the brush to be uh, back against, in, in a one direction, back against the, uh, the bladed pieces as if they are going straight through. And you don't want to go side to side for a lot of that. You just want to touch it. And the weirdness of a toothbrush, especially when it's been used, gives it a very random pattern. It doesn't uh, look too much like a regular brush. So even if you can't get it to fling uh, properly by flicking it or any of the other stuff, just tapping it like I was doing is still going to give you some random patterns. And random's good, especially in the circumstance, because it gives it some character. So here we are again. You can see the blue highlight. The face is a little out of focus, but you know it's not too big a deal. Uh, the way I'm flicking it, it's not going to get on the ground. You really don't want it on the ground, because like I keep saying, it's not going to drip. You're in microgravity. Um, it's, there's no... There's, there's nothing to say that the kill happened there. Maybe they the kill, grab, and drag to the queen. You don't know the uh, too much about the social structure of uh, the carnivores, but uh, we know that we're in a microgravity environment. So as it's coming at you, if it did have another kill that kill was away from you. There's no real reason to believe other than the possibility of a handprint that there should be blood on the rest of the scene. Some people, you know, especially the people that make sci-fi movies and they have to make it in a gravity environment um, because they can't just make it on the, the vomit comet, that uh, plane that does those parabolas that gives you like 20 seconds of weightlessness. They can't make a movie on that thing. So uh, 
you may in your mind start thinking oh it needs to be there it needs to be all over the place the only model I would suggest putting some blood on the ground is this one because it crawls um, it may be using those uh, you know early tail pieces even to kind of keep it stuck to the ground it is definitely spiking into the ground to pull itself along and it's going to drag it's not necessarily going to drip but it's going to drag and smear blood all over the place so that's why I'm giving just a little bit a couple of flex and a little bit of uh, touch of the blood on these guys only do whatever you want I'm not the judge of your stuff I'm the judge of my stuff and if I looked at it, it would drive me nuts. So that's why it's different for these guys. And the larva, I didn't put any blood. I'll show you the larva in the big family photo later. I just used the slime that they come out of the egg. It's uh, the same hex wraith green that I added into the, uh, the other color of blue to match the Adrestia. And... Uh, these guys, like I said, are the only ones that get that uh, ground blood. I don't know what they're going to eat on the ship. They're still bigger than a human, so maybe they're eating people. We're going to get some cats in Wave 2, so maybe it's a space cat. Uh, it's hard to say. If there was a space cow, cool. But I don't think they're going to build a pod just for a cow. I hear they're making the uh, lab-grown meat. And that's probably what they can just have 3D printers and amino acids. And that's how they make their proteins for food. Uh, here we go again. This guy doesn't have the tails. He's a breeder. Um, I would guess that he's too important to actually go out and hunt. But, uh, you know, maybe the queen doesn't think so. Maybe they mate one time, and then the rest of the time they're sent out to uh, attack stuff. I would have thought, like a spider, the breeder should be smaller. Uh, you know, like a male spider is dozens to hundreds of times smaller than the female spider. They don't have to carry eggs. So, uh, maybe he does get his hands dirty. I figured uh, just meat flopping around would get a little bit on his chest plate but for the most part hands and those uh, gripping appendages the blades that would just be where the blood's at but the black still looks good I'm happy about it the red though I was like eh it's a little one note so I go for the glistening blood it's just a lighter hue and as I flick it around, it's going to leave little droplets and, uh, you know, just give it a little different feel. You're not going to notice it in the dark. You're not going to notice it uh, if you're playing at a friend's house that doesn't have bright white LED lights. But if you are playing the game in the sunlight, maybe you'll pick it up just that there's a couple of different colors breaking up the uh, the reds and uh, here we go everybody's done you can see how the blacks and the blues really blend together there's that uh, goopy larva stuff I use screaming bell on the box which is a different metallic uh, again I just needed some red to break up all the blue that was on that queen so uh, I use steel for the arm, but I figured they may have a different material for thermal properties or cost. Who knows that they would have kept uh, a vat full of uh, little alien crazy things. But uh, everybody looks uh, 
hungry. Everybody looks uh, ready to attack stuff. And uh, they all kind of have their own little personality, which is kind of the point. Didn't take any extra time for the most part. Uh, you're going to refill your airbrush a lot. So just refill it when you get to the next mini. When I went to the darker blue, I think it was only like 12 drops for the bigger intruders. And uh, so you just keep plopping them in. And uh, I actually went back and did a couple that I originally had in blue back into black so then I could repaint it out into the darker blue just to have a nice variation. The uh, Mendeleev split was a quadrant situation. So you'd have, depending on the way the genes work, uh, two would get the same genetic markers and then uh, two others would be separated. So you'd have a total of three options and two of them were the same. So you have two of the light blue, one of the black, and one of the dark blue. And that's why I made that decision. You can uh, thank Onri Mendelev for, uh, for that. I may be getting his first name wrong, but uh, he was the guy that was the monk with his pea plants. And that's what I learned uh, genetics to start with. So here we go. Top. That's the Awaken Realms official photo for the version of Sundrop that they do. Bottom, when you just saw, it's me. And on the right are some early tests. So the turquoise, purple, and the red. I think the red looked super cool, but uh, I was trying to match that Adrestia, so I just went with the blue. The purple also looked really good, but I don't know what they did for the gold on the head. Um, and I don't know what the Wave 2 uh, added stretch goals, or stretch goals are going to look like. So I'm just going to wait on those. I believe I got the sun drop on the added Carnomorphs. I just didn't get it on the main box, just so I could try it out myself and see if I could replicate it. I loved it on um, LOH, Lords of Hellas. I wish I could have gotten the sun drop on Edge Dawnfall. Um, it just makes it so I feel like I can jump in and play right away. This took about two hours, three hours with the drying. So you can make a decision what you want. There's Amazon affiliate links in the description. And thanks for watching. And if you watch this twice, sorry about that. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the experience of painting with me. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them in the comments. And I'll get to you as I can. Uh, I don't do a ton of painting videos. I'm going to try out a GoPro or some other cameras and see if they work just as well. But uh, if I can, if it's something I can uh, get around, then uh, I'll try to... Uh, keep more of these going. People seem to be interested a lot in the painting stuff. Uh, I have a lot of other videos. Uh, I try not to ask too much for money, but if you do want to support the channel, hit subscribe, hit like, or pick something up off of the affiliate link, and that'll help me keep going. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good one.